What's up guys, Tim Trevathan with Tim Trevathan Homes and Keller Williams Realty. Today we're gonna to talk about the Redfin forecast for 2023. If you haven't checked out my other video that I did on the predictions that Zillow gave, make sure to check that out. And this one is kind of similar, but there's more of them, 11 predictions, and it's done by Redfin Corporation, which is a big website that shows homes that are for sale. They also have their own agency, but this I'm gonna give from my personal perspective, in my opinion, as far as whether I agree or disagree, and what is that gonna look like in the local Metro Atlanta market that I serve here. So the title reads, Redfin's annual housing outlook, a post-pandemic sales slump will push home prices down for the first time in a decade. So prediction number one, home sales will fall to their lowest level since 2011 with a slow recovery in the second half of the year. So this prediction is actually a pretty good prediction. I will say that in the Atlanta market, we have already seen prices drop about 5% since around March at the peak of the market before interest rates started to really skyrocket and affect this market the way that it has. Also, the number of homes that have sold have decreased every month for the last nine months in a row. So because there are less sales, that means that there's less comps, meaning there's less demand, meaning that there's also a chance for lower prices. As homes sell in the market longer due to buyer demand caving in, due to interest rates rising, we could see this continue on. Now this is where we see the local market determining how this plays out, because I don't think this is gonna be across the entire nation. Here in Georgia, specifically here in Metro Atlanta, I still have buyers that are looking to buy. Now, one of the things that this prediction number one mentioned, which I totally agree, is that the people that are buying are not the people that want to buy, they're the ones that need to buy. The ones that have families that are growing, they have a baby on the way, a second child on the way. Those that are getting married and they no longer wanna be in an apartment and they need to live together in one place, they tend to opt to buy rather than to rent out an apartment. There are many options and many reasons for why people are still buying. Also with the buy down in interest rates as an option now with lenders, this can still make your mortgage lower than the rent amounts that are going on around Metro Atlanta. So still you can find mortgages that are cheaper than the going rent. Now, the reason why I say this is a local determining factor is because if you look at other markets like Austin, Texas, or Phoenix, you're seeing massive price drops there more than other places such as here in Atlanta. And that is because the price increases there went up dramatically more than other cities across the nation. And yes, while Atlanta home prices jumped up a lot, 24% to be exact in 2021 and more at the beginning of this year, then of course we're gonna see a decrease because that's just not sustainable. And we're used to seeing an average of three to 6%, you know, around four, four or 5% an increase in home values per year since 2013. So to see a 24% increase in one year, that's not sustainable. Of course, we're gonna start seeing drops with the interest rates going up and demand that has gone down. Prediction number two, mortgage rates will decline ending the year below 6%. Well guys, this will be something hopeful because it means it will be lower than what it is now, albeit not by much, but here's the thing. If you look at 2022 predictions from Redfin, you can see I actually did a video on this, it was already a year ago, and they are predicting that it would go up to 3.6% by quarter three of this year, 2022, but guess what happened? We got past 3.6, blasted into 4% and 5% territory into quarter two back in April and May. So not only did the rates go higher than what they predicted, they went higher much more quickly. So I don't know if this is gonna be the case. We'll see. I think the important thing is that you're really gonna to have to start looking at the numbers. Some buyers might have to even opt for a smaller square footage home and be okay with that. Prediction number three, prices will post their first year over year decline in a decade, but the US will avoid a wave of foreclosures. Now this I think I can agree with because again, home sales have declined year over year for the last nine months. And also home prices have declined about 5% in Metro Atlanta. And so to see the year start off with a downward trajectory that will continue, yes, we could see home values coming down. Again, you need to look at perspective. So if you already own a home, you still have a lot of equity that you can tap into if you wanted to sell. 
So those that are thinking we're gonna be in a foreclosure market next year, probably not gonna happen. In fact, there's a staggering statistic, something to the degree of about 50% of homeowners own their homes free and clear in the United States. That means half of homeowners here don't pay in mortgage because it's already paid off. Prediction number four, Midwest Northeast will hold up best as overall market cools. Look, this is true, especially if you look at the Northeast. I was just in New York not too long ago, a few months ago, and I was catching up with a Keller Williams brokerage up there. And they're saying like, look, we still have multiple offers over asking price on properties here. And it was a shock to me because that is no longer the market here in Metro Atlanta. And the biggest reason why is because they said that the inventory is still so low, very low there, lower than here, lower than anywhere. And that's the biggest driving force as far as people that are buying. Prediction number five, rents will fall and many Gen Zers and young millennials will continue renting indefinitely. Now, this is a prediction that could play out accurately because statistics show that in the last several decades, people are living in their parents' house longer at an older age than they used to. But when the rents decline, it's gonna incentivize them to want to stay in those rentals longer. And so it may not incentivize them to wanna to buy, it just may mean they wanna rent longer and be comfortable, unless if they really have their finances in order and set goals for themselves to try to save and put away a certain amount in their bank. Prediction number six, builders will focus on multifamily rentals. Now this is a prediction that even Zillow kind of referenced to, and particularly with apartment complexes and homes that are new construction communities and they're being built to rent. For the first time in the last couple of years, as I drive around town here in Gwinnett County, I see neighborhoods that are new construction and not being built for homeowners, but for renters. And also apartment complexes, I will say, there's a lot more being built and there's too many. I think we have an overdose of the apartment rental market. I think these apartment complexes in particular are really gonna contribute to the increase in traffic. We have a lot of places that are zoned for this kind of apartment use that was either previously commercial or land. They bulldozed the land on Buford Drive close to where I live. You can see that there's tons and tons of new communities being built apartment complexes of like two to 300 units that are just gonna really make that traffic congestion even more than it already is. And I'm telling you, it's getting bad. Prediction number seven, investor activity will bottom out in the spring, then rebound. Look, I was working with a lot of buyers firsthand who were buying investment properties back in 2020 and 2021. But this year, all my buyers have been permanent resident buyers. I haven't worked with any investors this year, except for one at the beginning of the year. And as soon as rates went up, that person unfortunately disappeared. They, they have not called me at all and they're not looking to buy an investment property to the best of my knowledge. But that may change if rates start to come down a little bit next year with the home prices also coming down. So be on the lookout here Metro Atlanta, there might be an investor opportunity next year, but it all depends how it plays out. Again, take a look at that next video about investors being in trouble. One of the things that it mentioned in that prediction is that a lot of the I buyers are now out. Zillow offers has already closed down their business a year ago. Also, Redfin is cutting out their iBuyer program. And also, Open Door, which they're still around and they're one of the last ones to be around. I think they had like a billion dollar loss in quarter three. I mean, some crazy, crazy losses. I don't know how their kind of business model will be sustainable in the near future. So what are iBuyers, in case you don't know? They're the ones, these big corporations, institutional investors, they're basically glorified uh, flippers where they buy homes for cheap and then they flip them, meaning they renovate it. And usually very small renovations like new carpet, new wall paint, and that's about it. And they put it back on the market for a higher price and sell it. A lot of homeowners that sell to these I buyers are the ones that don't have the money to be able to renovate the home, to be able to sell it for more, or they need a quick exit out because they got a job offer and they got to quickly move to the next city or state that they're assigned their new position. So having said that, because the I buyers are out, those so-called investors are no longer there to compete with the mom and pop investors, the first time investors, people like us who are aspiring to own our first rental property. Prediction eight, 
Gen Zers will seek jobs in apartments in relatively affordable mid-tier cities. Now, knowing myself, I would probably fit this category if I was in this age group. I'm not a Gen Zer, I'm a millennial. But as a Gen Z or the youngest working force right now in the market, the early 20s age, I could see them going to big mid-tier cities. And I guess you could say Atlanta is considered a mid-tier city. So there are a lot of those that are moving here. And a lot of them want to be in places like Midtown and Vinings and, and places that are downtown, close to downtown anyway in Atlanta, that they can get all the amenities they want. I also see a lot of people in suburbia here where I work and live. And there are those people that want to live where they can be kind of in a semi-urban area like downtown Duluth, downtown Suwannee, or Avalon and Alpharetta. In my life, I grew up in Alabama in Montgomery from kindergarten all the way up to high school. So I can understand the feeling of moving to mid-tier city. If you look at the South, other than Miami or Charlotte, Atlanta's the closest and best mid-tier city that you would want to move if you're a Gen Zer with all the city amenities that you can have. A lot of people are moving here for that reason. And my hope is that those people will eventually become homeowners in the near future. I know with the cost of living that's gone up with salaries not meeting with that standard of cost of living, I'm hoping that still they can fight, work hard, not give up, come up with some trades that can help them, some side hustles that will give them that savings to be able to invest in their first home. Prediction number nine, migration from one part of the country to another will ease from the pandemic boom. Yes, I will say that having no income tax is a great benefit if you're trying to move somewhere new. In Texas and Florida and Tennessee, those are the places to be. But at the same time, you gotta watch other things. A caveat such as in Texas is high property tax values. Now, if you're renting, it doesn't affect you, but if you own a home in Texas, even on a $250,000 home, which is less than the average price of homes here in Atlanta, which is around $395,000, you're still paying a lot more for property tax, which gets built into your monthly mortgage and can really take a toll on you financially. So you still wanna do the calculations. I think one of the biggest reasons why the migration is easing and has already eased is because all of the moving has already taken place through COVID. Remote work has been established with certain companies and other companies say, now you have to go back to the office and we're making you go back. So there's no room to be able to negotiate and moving somewhere else. A lot of that's done. However, I'm still getting calls from people all over the country that are moving here that I'm helping to call Georgia their home. And some of them, they're moving here for jobs. Others are moving here for retirement. Others are moving here for a big Korean community. Others are wanting to live here because of the geography, the affordability of Atlanta, while being able to be close to the mountains in North Georgia. Those are some of the reasons why people are still moving here. And of course, things to do. Prediction number 10, rising disaster insurance costs will make extremely climate risky homes even more expensive. And that goes without saying that uh, cost of living has gone up all across the board, whether it's utilities, food, clothing, gasoline, everything. And definitely you can say the same with insurance costs. But here's the one thing that I'm happy to say that while this prediction may be true, it doesn't affect Georgia so much because we don't have those natural disasters. Probably the main one we have is the occasional thunderstorm. We don't really get tornadoes like I experienced in Alabama, and we don't really get hurricanes except for maybe a category one or tropical storm because by the time they get here, passing through the Gulf of Mexico, through Florida and South Alabama, it's already weakened. So there's really no reason for extra insurance costs other than home insurance. We don't have to worry about flood insurance or extra catastrophic damage insurance that maybe other states have to do. And lastly, prediction number 11. I don't have enough fingers. <laughs> More cities will follow Minneapolis's YIMBY example to curb housing expenses. Now, as far as the Georgia Real Estate Commission and the powers that be, I have yet to hear anything that's going on in Atlanta in particular that's going to have something like this where they follow suit with Minneapolis. It would be great to see more affordable housing, definitely, by all means. But I think the bigger issue going on here is the fact that Georgia is a landlord-friendly state more so than almost any other state in the US. And that could be a good and bad thing. If you're a landlord, obviously that's a good thing. But if you're a renter, it's gonna make you feel sometimes in a position where it seems unfair. But certainly I think the rent amount here has gone up a lot 
And that's why we see that 30% of buyers in Georgia are investors. And by doing that, it prevents people to become homeowners because there are less homes that are available to be bought and lived in since the investors are coming to take over. So I hope there's some kind of law that could be passed, maybe some kind of rent control law. But again, I know the free market is what it is. It determines those rates based on the demand. So I'm all for free market economics. At the same time, maybe there is some kind of small regulation that can be done to resolve this. So there you have it, 11 predictions from Redfin and my own personal take here in the local Atlanta market with those predictions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, take a look at my other videos. 2023 is gonna be a very interesting year to come. There's still gonna be plenty of opportunities to buy and sell. It just all depends on your finances, your goals, your situation, and a lot more other factors. So stick around, see you on the next video.